Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. I really did not want to start today's vlog in the car, but I'm just not too sure when else I'm going to get the chance to say good morning and explain what's happening this morning. So yes, I am parked up outside the um, the club at Bamford, but it's a different reason for being here today. Is it me or do my eyebrows look really dark? I used um, <laughs> I used a different brow pencil, but it's the Code 8 one, but maybe I've got the wrong shade. Anyway, so I've done an hour of Reformer Pilates this morning, feeling really good. It was one of Vikrant's classes, and he really knows how to push you. It's not like sweat, well, it was sweaty, um, but just pretty intense, lots of abs, and I'm glad it wasn't too much arms, because that's what I did with Lauren in the gym yesterday. Anyway, so, I'll quickly pop some makeup on and um, put some proper clothing on because I'm actually meeting the Bamford um, press team this morning. They're bringing a few girls from London as well and we're going to be discovering the Bamford, um, as in the cosmetic company, they do body lotions and oils and so many lovely things and they're launching their new collection which is called the Bamford Moss Collection. Maybe a longer name than that, but we'll see, we'll soon find out. So they're all arriving any minute now from London. We're going to have breakfast together at the club, which will be really lovely. And then the original plan was to go forest bathing, which is when you go into the woods and experience the, the, the calmness. Um, and we're, I, I don't know that much about it, so um, I was quite looking forward to that. But I've got a feeling they might change the plans seeing as the weather is quite frankly disgusting today which is such a huge shame i think a lot of the london girls um, are going to have treatments while they're here as well i've asked if i can do mine another day because then this afternoon charlie and i are heading into london and we've got a very very special evening ahead of us we are going to be catching up with the wonderful Okiem who was the pianist who performed at our wedding and then he is having a concert in London with the Infinity Orchestra so I cannot wait Charlie can't wait we've got a lovely hotel booked um, and then we've got a fun day in London tomorrow so can't wait to bring you along but I'd better get back inside I'm keeping an eye out for them but they might be coming in through a different entrance so don't want to miss the um, the breakfast and the introduction to the Bamford Moss collection so let's head inside and I need to sort out my eyebrows <laughs> okay you're propped up on a tripod in the back of my car um, I'm actually having a quick outfit change because we're heading out now into the forest we're going to do some forest bathing and I just thought that um, my jumper is far more appropriate and far more warm than my little jacket I think they're giving us dry robes so that we stay nice and toasty warm thankfully it stopped raining because it was positively biblical <laughs> rain this morning um, but it's still a little bit of drizzle in the air we've just been learning about how it's the woodland moss collection and it's as a result of the woodland moss fragrance being so popular they've now turned it into a full collection including hand lotions and um, a lovely body cream gel amongst others so i will show you the full collection a little bit later Okay, that feels far more appropriate. Really looking forward to trying some forest bathing now. They were just telling us about all the different benefits of it, which I'll explain as we go. Okay, we've got another layer to add on. I've got a Bamford dry robe. And we're here in the woods. We're gonna go and do our first bit of forest bathing. If you want to face outwards, if you want to step away from the group a little bit, but still listen to what I'm saying, then feel free to do that as well. Okay, my darlings, we are out in Oddington Woods and we are doing our forest bathing. I'm keeping my voice down because it's a very zen experience. Forest bathing is so good for you to bring down your stress levels, reduce your cortisol, and a great way of connecting back to nature. So we've just had a little bit of a kind of guided session, um, learning really how to do it. It's kind of like a super natural form of meditation so really taking in all the nature around you whether that's the smells the petrichor smell of the rain that we had this morning that torrential rain as it's releasing all of these different smells and chemicals from the earth and then the sights that we can see looking at the so many different shapes and patterns that we can see in nature whether it's the contrast between the trees and the sky 
or whether it's flora and fauna, flora and fauna foliage. Um, what can we feel? Can we feel the wind between our fingers as we walk through the woods? What can we hear? Can we hear the bird song? Can we hear twigs snapping? So it's all about using all of your senses and really becoming immersed in nature. So as you can imagine, I'm absolutely loving it. And we can just see some little bluebells starting to come up in the woodland floor. It's gonna be a sea of blue in just a few weeks time. So we're now all gathering back together and I think we're gonna have a foraged tea. These are the kinds of shapes that you just don't see in man-made structures. It's meant to be really calming to the human mind to see these kinds of unusual shapes. Well, I'm very glad I didn't do anything with my hair today because it is back to being torrential rain. My goodness, I think we were so lucky that like 20 minutes, half an hour in the woods when it wasn't raining, it's, um, yeah, biblical is the word to describe today. So we've just had a lovely lunch in the club and I've said goodbye to the team now. A lot of the girls are having the new uh, woodland moss treatment in the spa, but I've asked if I can bank that one and have it another day because the reason that we're heading into London is because the wonderful Okiem that, um, I can't remember if I told you this earlier, I apologise if I did, Okiem, the incredible pianist that performed at our wedding, is his concert in London tonight. I did tell you that earlier, didn't I? I'm getting deja vu. But I'm meeting Charlie here at Banbury train station. Um, it's going to be interesting getting my stuff out of the car and onto the platform with this awful weather. So wish me luck and I'll see you when we get to our hotel in London. Okay, my darlings, it's an hour or so later. We successfully managed to get on the same train, hallelujah. It's still pouring with rain outside, so, ooh, even my camera has decided to give up the ghost today. There we go. Yes, still pouring, so I have to, so I've just popped my hair in a quick half up, half down. No point in doing anything too dramatic because it's just gonna get rained out. I was gonna stay in what I was wearing earlier, but we actually decided very last minute to book a dinner at Hawksmoor. Charlie was craving steak and I can never say no to a Hawksmoor mac and cheese. So luckily I grabbed this me and M dress very last minute as I was throwing things in my suitcase this morning and then I've got some just little heeled boots on. Charlie's looking exceptionally <laughs> leisure. <laughs> You're looking very leisurely, darling. I, feel, <clears throat> I wonder if this resonates with anyone else, but I just, this weather, combined with just this time of the year generally, I just feel utterly exhausted. It feels like, mm. obviously, honeymoon feels like so long ago, doesn't it? Yeah. It feels like we've been working non-stop, lots going on, I'm sure everyone's the same. Yeah. And February's just the worst month. February's worse than January. Yeah, I'm normally a positive presence on this channel, but at the moment I'm just exhausted and we just need some sun. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I could like, I could just, I could just honestly go to bed right now. Get a delivery. Yeah, oh. we always think that, don't we? A delivery on a spurk. That would be the dream. Yeah. But we're going for steak, darling, it's even better. We are, but... I know, we always say this when we come out of the house, this is why we just love staying at home so much. Getting back to the Cotswolds. I know, I know. And um, we had a little chuckle because I did book the smallest room in the entire hotel. It's Which far bigger upwards than it is um, crossways. Yeah, look, this but is we're literally here hotels. for like an hour. London hotels are so expensive. Yeah. And yeah, it, it's clever. Do you know what though? The interior design in here, I was just thinking this. These are velvet. It's like a velvet full poster bed. This little, I've stuck my suitcase on it, but that little window, but well, not window seat, the little sort of no. alcove, mm. that's cleverly done. And then the mirrors above. Kinky. Very, but the mirrors are very effective. Yeah. Without those, this room would feel tiny. They would, yeah. It needs the, needs the, um, the windows. Or the mirrors, rather. Do we have like coffee mirrors? Oh yeah, look, there's a little bar here, yeah. darling. Oh, oh good. Bathroom. We're staying at the ho a hotel called the Twenty Two. Oh good, so we've got champagne. <laughs> we've got water. Is there a coffee machine? I don't know if there is. Maybe there's no coffee machine. Um, yeah, and then you've got the actually the biggest part of the room is the <laughs> is the bathroom, which is 
quite cool actually, black and white. It's very, is it Mackenzie Childs, the designer that's all black and white? You can see the dress a little bit more clearly here. Um, but yeah, we are going to be exceptionally lazy and get a taxi to Hawksmoor on Air Street because it's pouring with rain and then we're heading over to a place called Union Chapel for the Okiyama concert this evening, so let's go. Look at this, we've got two steaks, we've got a beef dripping fries, bernays, mac and cheese, and this is one of the best mac and cheeses in the world, uh, buttered greens, cream spinach, Caesar salad. Are you happy, darling? I am very happy. Jolly good. We were just saying how one of our first dates in the UK was in Hawksmoor. Second date. Second date. So here we go. Yeah. So we've made it to the venue. This is Union Chapel in Islington. This is where we're gonna see our favorite perform. Yay, can't wait.
through our Leica photography course day. We're doing a little walk around um, Mayfair, putting into practice some of the tips that we've learnt. Charlie is practicing some macro. <laughs> what are the top things you've learnt so far, darling? Well, I think Aside from how to match your camera with your jacket. Yeah, exactly. All the right things. No, I mean, look, obviously the main reason for today was that you and I, and I think a lot of us are guilty of this in lots of different areas of life, we kind of just were thrust into taking photos and we obviously work with a lot of amazing professional photographers now, but we've never really got to grips with like about 90% of what ca the cameras we own do. It's the same with like a MacBook. You buy a MacBook and we just use it for email and web browsing and you don't use it to the full capacity. Mm. So I think really, even just the basic stuff today, I'm really happy with how sort of, because I was almost a bit nervous that we'd come in and you and I would feel really amateur. Yeah. In our knowledge of, you know, what is ISO, what is aperture, um, shutter speed and just understanding those the, the, what is it the triangle because mm, we both have really lost confidence in shooting haven't we yeah i think yeah. we both started shooting each other you know sh you know that was how we both started and then we hired photographers and yeah. we've been out of practice for maybe eight years i'd say it's a combination of being out of practice and then we've obviously the business and everything has grown to beyond where we were before as well. Yeah. So then you feel even less confident. We want better quality outcome yeah. and yet we have lost the neck to yeah. do it. And I think the aim of today is firstly, we're just really interested in photography anyway. Both of us are. Mm. Secondly, I think it's gonna hopefully really benefit the exciting new blog platform that we're gonna launch uh, because there's so many opportunities that we miss out on in terms of restaurants we're eating in, yeah. little we villages We do in the so many lovely things and we're like, oh, I wish I had a photographer capture. with us. Yeah, just but capture, now <laughs> we can capture do it. really to share with everyone on the channel. Yeah. Um, and particularly with store top and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so what is the camera that we're practicing on today? Well, this is this is what I bought about a year and a half ago, Yeah. which is embarrassing really because then we've barely used it. And it's yeah. the Leica Q2. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think they've now got the Q3. Yes. So they've actually launched an even better newer version yeah but um it's a good camera because it's a fixed lens so this is the, you know our other two cameras are a lot bigger yeah and have a lot of different lens changes it's a lot more of a faff to take them around my hope mm. is that you and i can whenever we go to the pub on a sunday lunch or we go for an explorer in chipping camden mm. or we go to a dalesford or straw top we can take this with us and if there are moments we want to capture we've got this instead of always using our phone yeah and we must um, do that we must like really get into yeah, practice of having it with us all the time definitely because we're really we're spoiled with where we live and yeah. we're spoiled with where we get to visit yeah and our aim is we want to share it with more people don't we yeah so um no it's been really interesting today and we're not done mm, no but i think yeah, both of us want to capture different things, don't we? Yours yeah. is more portrait and fashion side, maybe. Mm -hmm. I've been um, taking photos of flowers. Yeah. Lovely. Let's do it. And just like that, we are back home again after a very educational day. And we have got some delicious nonna tonda. Non tonda I mean, this is for dinner. literally like such a Friday treat, isn't it? Because we just come back. Yeah. If nonna tonda's watching, we, we buy because <laughs> we spend a fortune, not a fortune, but we would love to work with them. Because we <laughs> love nonna tonda and it's so much we better do. than To me, it doesn't feel like a Friday because we've been in London. I know. It feels it weird. Is. So, to give people an idea, I think we've talked about it before. <clears throat> Today's recipe is really nice. It's like called like trophy with Ligurian basil pesto. Ooh! Mmm, this is my favourite. Oh my gosh. And that place that we went to for lunch, Mercado, Mer Mayfair Mercado? Something like that. Honest review, it was a good, cool setup. Yeah. I'm not sure we chose the best stand. I thought the food yeah. was okay. Yeah, but tasty. The sushi looked way better. It wasn't like exceptional quality, but it, it's fun. Like they had pizza. The pasta place did look really good. The, the other food looked better quality. Mm. You know when you're in that awkward situation where the people... Don't give me any more, by the way. That's loads. Oh, wait. People that were serving the food were so friendly. Yeah. And you've already ordered, but you haven't paid. And then you've seen the food and you're like, oh, uh. if I didn't, like, if, if it wouldn't upset their feelings, I wouldn't. Oh, well, just because I thought it looked a bit amateur. Yeah. Whereas the food, the Japanese stuff looked amazing. The dim sum, the yeah. bao. Well, got, yeah. Two Leica guys went for the Japanese, which, and they go there obviously regularly. So we should have just tried the Japanese. Yeah. Because they were so friendly. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
of the way that I decided to edit this. So let's go back in time to the beginning of the week for another day in London. Good morning, my darlings. It is a gray and slightly chilly Tuesday morning. I'm heading into London today for a couple of meetings and I'm heading to Waterhouse Young for a facial, which is gonna be wonderful because it's a, uh, what do you call it? Hydrofacial, which my skin really needs at the moment. I've been using a lot of facial fake tan, which just kind of sits in your pores and gives you very blocked and dark pores. <laughs> so can't wait to have a hydrofacial. Uh, yeah, a couple of meetings and I'm going to bring you along. As you know, I don't normally start vlogs with a London day. I like to do something a little bit more wholesome. But actually, this week it's kind of unavoidable because I'm in London today, a day at home shooting content <laughs> tomorrow, um, and then I'm in London again on Thursday and Friday because we've got something really fun happening on Thursday evening. So. Yeah, lots of London time this week. Anyway, I've got <laughs> four minutes <laughs> to get to my train and I'm at the traffic lights that can either like make or break whether you catch your train or not. So wish me luck, it's green. Stay green, stay green, stay green. And I will see you when I get to London. Kia man. So after my first meeting I went on my Instagram explore page and I saw this place crop up. It's called Chrome. It's basically on St Christopher's Place um, just off Oxford Street and they do these funky, I think it's called an ube matcha and my dream, they do the pistachio kind of like cronut uh, donut pistachio croissant, what are they called? You know the pastries. So what a fantastic mid-morning treat. I will let you know how it tastes. Two minutes later, quick update. It is sensationally delicious. I don't know if it's gonna have many of the health benefits of a regular matcha, um, but oh my gosh, for a treat, this is scrumptious. Definitely recommend. So today's meetings have gone really, really well. And now a bit of pampering to end the day. I'm here at the Waterhouse Young Clinic, which is, oh, done something crazy there, um, on Devonshire Street, just off Marlebone High Street. I'm gonna be having a hydrofacial and microneedling with some incredible, super powerful serums getting microneedled into my skin. And the thing that I love about getting facial treatments here is this very jazzy suit. So I'm wearing my leggings. Woo, sexy, under my dress because this is like a little trouser suit and it gives you a lymphatic drainage massage while you have your hydrofacial. So it's gonna be fantastic, I can't wait. And it's gonna be, I think, a 75 minute treatment. it's now Wednesday the lighting in here is quite blue because it is quite possibly the most miserable of all the weather outcomes today it's cold it's gray it's rainy and today is a shoot day which is just really bad luck um, but we've had good luck in the past so I'll take I'll take it 
last night um just got home and had a lovely dinner really good timing charlie was just finishing as i walked in the door so had a nice dinner and then we had an early night which was great my facial yesterday at the waterhouse young clinic was such an amazing treatment i did leave you on a little time lapse so you could see i was in the very jazzy lymphatic drainage kind of inflatable trouser suit which is just so clever it basically fills with air starting at your feet and then fills it so that it's quite tight and then it relaxes and then it builds up and goes down so you're getting a massage but with a machine it's really amazing and that's just secondary to what's happening on your face so yesterday's treatment was a regular hydrofacial um but without too much of a peel because I then had microneedling and this was the first time that I've ever properly had microneedling. I wouldn't say it was painful, but I would say that I was happy when it was over because it wasn't a roller, it was more like a stamp. Um, and then the lady, um, Valerie, she popped on this little potion that had, I think it had over 50 incredible ingredients for your skin and where the microneedling has created little, little, um, what's a nice way of putting it, holes in your skin, it is able to penetrate really deeply and then she popped on, I think it was a ceramide, was it ceramide? It was a growth factor serum, GF serum, which is just so great for skin collagen and glowiness. My skin is still, this light is very bright, my skin's still a tiny bit red today, but I can see the glow starting to come through. It would be a miracle for my skin to look good when the weather is like this. So, um, Annoyingly, given the weather, I'm actually meant to be shooting a skincare TikTok in the greenhouse today. It's going to be really hard because it's just so grey out there. Maybe I'll do it in the pink room instead. The brief literally said garden florals, bright spring day, but there's nothing in the garden that's flowering yet aside from the narcissus, narcissus in the greenhouse. Um, yeah, it's just gonna be challenging. And then we've got a reel to shoot that I'm really excited to do for a campaign. Um, second time we're working with this particular company, so that's great. They loved what we did last time. And then another skincare reel as well. So a lot of things that would have been wonderful if the weather had been better, but you know, just can't be helped. So I did put in the little Charlie rollers in my hair while I was blow drying it and it's given it some really nice movement. It's quite voluminous. I've not properly brushed it out yet so that they will flatten down a little bit. <laughs> I can just tell today's shoot day I'm not gonna like love the content because I only, I just love everything to be bright and sunny and today is just not that day. We'll get it done and hopefully Jake can work some editing magic and then this afternoon slash evening I'm heading back over to Estelle Manor for dinner with the girls so it's going to be a really nice evening and we are going to the Chinese restaurant I think which I'm so looking forward to but anyway I just heard the dogs so I think Jake has just got here so let's start shooting. Okay, Charlie and Jake are filming some bits down here in the drawing room. It makes me miss Christmas, but I realised I haven't actually shown you the new George Smith sofa in the daylight before. It's quite hard to show you because it's so backlit, but I think you can get a better idea of just how plumptious and comfy and gorgeous it is. I like this sort of almost a bit contemporary, um, how the cushions are finished. Do you know what I mean? A bit, is it less structured, would you say? Oh, Do you it's know a little what I mean? bit like rough around the edges, yeah, like almost. Yeah, the these, I mean. Yeah the piping and the um, the shape of it. Mm -hmm. It's actually, we love that sofa, but this is more even more comfortable. It's so comfy. Yeah, this it's is actually, the most comfortable sofa in the house. It's the most comfortable sofa I've ever sat on. <gasps> it is, name a more I'm comfortable really sofa. Fact, as you say, it's quite hard to actually show it in the light. And obviously these cushions, yeah. we haven't figured out yet what cushions to put on here. Mm. These won't be staying. But I'm really happy now, are you, with this, yeah. this, and that, yeah. bringing color into the room. The room feels like nearly finished. Mm. Um, it looks amazing. I still think that when it's not Christmas we need a piece of artwork to put up here and we just take it down and swap it with the wreath because it feels like this needs to go soon. What I don't know. I don't know. I love no. it so much. It just seems wasteful. Don't you well, think? this wreath's been up for four months now. I know. So it's certainly it's not wasteful. It's so beautiful. Um, four months. But I think maybe, or maybe we just swap it for us. Maybe we swap the wreath twice a year. We yeah. We a spring summer wreath up. 
There's n there's not really any point because we don't really come in this room in the summer months, True. do we? True. Which is tragic. Um, do you want to show us? I noticed some of the paintings came back with the new frames. Yeah, they haven't been put up yet though. Oh, okay. Should we save that? Somebody is snuffling my hand. Oh, you're so nice. Have you found your way in? Shouldn't really be in here, should be small. Daddy, I'm not small, I'm big. I'm not the small one. He has one. serious phone while I'm shooting, He does. You can hear that we're doing something. Is this new? No, I've had this for a while. Oh, I haven't seen it before. <clears throat> we watched this program, nice didn't we? Selection of books. Mm. Yeah. I think that's the nice thing. We've been collecting these books. Look, Great Houses of England and Wales. Ew. This is a really good book. This is new, newer. Mm -hmm. But it talks through all like the great houses that look. Oh, wow. Is that Broughton Castle? It's Compton Winers. This Compton. is where the Marquis of Northampton, who owns some of the land around us, that's where he lives. Blimey. He's had six wives, I think. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy's coming back. Dickens! Lin Lin! His bum, mate, love. Dickens! <laughs> Lin -lin. Come on! He waits to be invited. He's a good boy. Come on! Come on, buddy! Dexy's saying, come on, bro. In your own time, my sweet little chunky one. Here you come. Oh, he's lovely. Come on, time for your close-up. You Daddy, don't toot my boot. Oh, hmm. What lovely doggies. What lovely doggies. You can look like you like each other. That's lovely. Is it a nice new sofa? Oh. Ah, ah. Stop there, please. Lin Lin. Nag nag. Oh, what's daddy got for you? What's daddy got? What's daddy We're got? ambassadors for George Smith, you know? I'm their model. Mummy, I still haven't had my paycheck from that yet. Dickie, you're sitting on it. Okay, we've been shooting for an hour, as you can see. <laughs> There's not really much evidence of curl left in my hair. The Dyson fan has just kicked off because we've got the fire lit downstairs. I think we need the chimney to be lined again because this room is the most fragrant of fire smoke um, when we light the fire downstairs. So there's clearly something leaking through the walls. But we've shot all the skincare stuff now. I've got at like 9,000 layers of moisturizer on because we're refilming and refilming different angle. It's been very challenging with the lighting and especially because the brief for this was like bright spring. <laughs> vibes which we we've tried our best we shall see um but now i'm gonna pop some makeup on i'm actually gonna sit here in my thermal to do the makeup because the fan is making it very warm in here and um i'm coming to the end of my aborian bb cream and it keeps spitting <laughs> at me and everywhere to be honest and i really don't want to get foundation on my brand new varley gym top I've just finished with a mist of the Charlotte Tilbury, what do you call it, um, makeup setting spray. For the next reel that we're shooting, I quite like the fact that um, they're all quite casual ones today, in that they're all just like cosy in the house. So this one that we're shooting, sorry, it was really annoying me out of the corner of my eye that this had grubby handprints all over it. I love beautiful um, bottles, but they do get a little bit grubby. This is the moisturizer that I've got, 9,000 layers on my face off. So the reel that we're shooting now is actually a morning routine style reel. So I didn't want to have too much makeup on, just want to look quite natural. Um, and yeah, we're gonna like make coffee, make a breakfast, even though it's lunchtime, nearly, um, and then shoot the content that we need to do. So let's go and do that. Ooh! 
Ooh, well done, Flele. Hello again, darlings. It's now 10 past five. We have finished shooting with Jake and just my luck, as soon as he was leaving, the sun actually came out for an hour or so. Um, typical, but at that point I was like, you know what, I'm actually quite exhausted from shooting, so didn't summon him back to do more sunny things. Um, but I've just been editing for the last hour and now, thinking about dinner, sorry about the rattling in the background, I'm going to top up my tea. This, let me actually show you, it's so tasty. I mean, it's essentially a mint tea, but this is the mint and it's, it's so flavoursome. I think it's actually like a passion fruit mint. You know, mint can be so many different flavours, there are so many varieties of mint, and it's just got a kind of fruitiness to it. It's so tasty, so I will absolutely not be getting rid of this um, once we've trimmed it all. I will be planting it out in the greenhouse and it will just keep growing so mm, even the smell yeah i think i'm pretty sure it's passion fruit but as a tea it's just so so nice anyway as you might be able to tell from where you're standing we're gonna do a bit of cooking i was meant to be going to estelle manor tonight with petra and nj but unfortunately petra has not been feeling too well today so we're gonna postpone that for a little while um until we can all get another date in the diaries together gutted not to be having delicious Chinese food at Estelle Manor and also apparently the spa is opening today so we were going to have a little look around that but maybe there's a silver lining here in that when we reschedule we will plan it that we go earlier in the day and we can actually enjoy the spa instead of just having a look around so unsurprisingly I'm going to do a mac and cheese for my dinner I don't know what Charlie's having but he wasn't planning on eating with me tonight so I'm sure he's got something planned He's having a sports massage at the moment. We've been using the Lucy app, which I've mentioned a few times. No affiliation with them or partnership or anything. It's just really, really handy and um, lovely to have someone come to your house to do treatments. So I'm gonna make myself a mac and cheese, which I know you guys have seen 12 million times before, but I was also just raiding the fridge and we have got a couple of parsnips left over from the weekend. No, I'm not gonna be putting them in my mac and cheese, don't worry. I've also got a bag of potatoes that need eating up, and I've got an apple. Where's that from? An apple, oh, bridesmaids, would you like an apple? <laughs> um, so I'm going to make roast parsnip and potato soup. And the reason that you add an apple is it just really brings out the sweetness of the parsnip. I think, yes, we've got some here. I'm gonna add a little bit of thyme. I'm gonna chop an onion and some garlic, cover everything in olive oil, roast it while I make my mac and cheese. Then I will cook the roasted veg in my chicken and beef broth that you saw me make at the weekend. This was free to make. It was made with the chicken bones. Oh, it's my mother. I'll call you back in two seconds, Lola. Um, the beef shin bone and essentially my vegetable scraps that would have gone Sorry, I had to change my battery and now I can't remember what I was saying I think I was telling you what was in my broth and the fact that it was free um, So that's great. Okay, so I'm going to scrub my parsnips and my spuds Slice them up cover them in olive oil and then get them roasting time chopping later and I've got two trays ready to go in the oven to roast. This one has got parsnip, potatoes, onion, garlic, that random carrot that was also in the fridge, a sprig of thyme sprinkled with olive oil and a load of salt and then this one couldn't fit it all in one tray. This one's just parsnip, potato and olive oil, salt and thyme. Here uh, I've just got the bits that I chopped off the onion, you know the little skin bits, tops of the carrots and little bits that I chopped off the top of the garlic. You guys know what I'm going to say. This is going in a freezer bag, um, ready for the next batch of broth. But I'm not going to be putting in the tops of the parsnip or the um, the bits which are literally just the crispy skin of the garlic. That's going to go in the bin, but this is all going to go in the freezer bag, ready for the next broth. Okay, I'm going to pop these in at the agar for about 30 minutes. 
and I think that is all the time I need to make my mac and cheese dinner. It is now pitch black outside, so I've got the big overhead lights on. This is gonna be slightly different mac and cheese for me. Normally I do parmesan and cheddar as my base for the cheese sauce, and then I add in something fun to make it a bit different. I have neither parmesan nor cheddar today, but what I do have, I've already blended it up. This is a lovely Dalesford Comte cheese, which is described as, just ripped the label, haven't I? Um, okay, I cannot tell you what it's described as, but if my memory serves correctly, I think it's sweet and nutty. To me, that's perfect in a mac and cheese. I've also, and on the cheese day, the creamery tour that Charlie and I did on Valentine's Day, I asked the guy that was leading it what his best cheese would be in a mac and cheese, and he recommended this Gruyere. So, it's very expensive, 53 pounds a kilogram. Don't worry, I didn't spend 53 pounds. This was 11 pounds, so I'm only gonna do a third of this. So Gruyere is gonna make it nutty again and stringy, I think. I've also got a little block left of um, blue cheese, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm nibbling at it right now while I cook, and I don't think there'll be anything left to go in the cheese sauce. This is the rind that I cut off the Comte, and apparently this is a great addition to the freezer bag of frozen veggie scraps to add into my next stock. So that's gonna go in my stasher bag. I'm gonna be lazy tonight and make the cheese sauce in the Thermomix, but it's exact same, just electrified than when I do it manually. You guys have seen me do it manually many times. Melt butter in a saucepan, add flour to turn it into a paste, add milk, add more flour, add more milk, keep stirring so that it's really nice and silky smooth, salt, pepper, um, and then when it's nice and creamy, add in your cheese. That's basically it. Sometimes I add mustard, sometimes I add garlic granules, sometimes, like tonight, <laughs> you can add some stock in there as well. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. The taste of your mac and cheese varies hugely based on the quality of your cheese. So if you can get a good quality cheese, that is winner winner chicken dinner. Anyway, my kettle is about to boil again for my pasta. That's a big decision. Um, I'll chat to you in a second about pasta, but first, let me get my sauce going. I just came outside because I noticed, wow, this mega sky out of the kitchen window. It's never quite as dramatic on camera, but my goodness me, that is rather beautiful. Looks like a My Little Pony sky. The birds are loving it too. Okay, the sauce is cooking in the Thermomix. Um, I'm just gonna pop a photo on the screen here, by the way, of uh, the view that Lala has of our house with the sunset. It's absolutely amazing. Pasta is on the boil. Let's give it a quick stir. And you may be shocked to know that I'm not using my usual favorite pasta. I'm using these little twizzly ricciolis instead. Fancy something a bit different. If you've watched my mac and cheese before, you will know. In fact, let me know down below if you remember what my favorite pasta is for mac and cheese. I do have it in the cupboard, but I just fancied something a little bit different today. So we'll see. Will I live to regret this tale? Who knows? So I reckon it'll be ready to um, construct in about 10 minutes, and it probably needs about 10 minutes in the aga. In the meantime, let's check on my roasting vegetables. So we've got the parsnip, the potatoes, the onion. Let's give everything a bit of a shake around and a bit of a stir. My goodness, this lighting is horrible. <laughs> but as you saw, the mac and cheese is now in the oven. I couldn't resist a few little tastes before it went in. It's just so tasty. If you guys have not tried mac and cheese before, let me know in the comments why not. Because I honestly think it's the greatest thing in the world, aside from sausage dogs. Okay, so my, my soup is not done. My vegetables are roasted. I have three quarters clean the Thermomix, to be honest. There's a bit of cheese sauce left in here. It's only gonna add to my soup flavor. I was going to do this the traditional way on the hob in a big um, 
pan is the word I'm looking for, where I put all of these bits except for the stalks of the thyme. I always forget to remove the thyme leaves from the stalk and then I find woody bits in my soup. That's not ideal. There we go. They are now removed. Yeah, I was going to put all of the bits that were roasted in a big thick casserole pan, put my stock on top and then let them cook for about 20 minutes and then blend. But then I thought if I just cook everything with the stock in the salad mix, then I don't have to wash a casserole dish. And I was going to blend it in here anyway, so I think that's very clever. But I appreciate not everyone has a Thermomix. Yes, you can heat things up in it, which is why I'm also able to do the cheese sauce. I love my Thermomix so much. So, what we're going to do is, now that I've removed the thyme leaves from the thyme stalk, popping everything in here... And by the way, I didn't measure quantities. I probably had um, two thirds parsnip to one third potato. And then also one medium sized uh, kind of regular onion, not red onion. Oops, I forgot the time <laughs> stalk from this one. And I think I probably put in four cloves of garlic. I don't mind if things are a little bit garlicky. Ooh, another thyme thing. Um, I didn't finish eating that bit of blue cheese, but obviously I don't want it to go to waste. So actually, once this has cooked a little bit, when I get to the blending stage, I'm gonna just whack the blue cheese into this as well. Cheesy parsnip and potato soup. Mmm. No such thing as too much pepper. And now, oh, it already smells so good. Do you know what? Parsnips are not my favorite part of a Sunday roast, but I love them in a soup. Now I'm just going to, I've got a lot of veggies in there, a lot of goodness, although it's all beige. I think the best soup for you is probably the broccoli one that I did before, and let me tell you, that was so good. Did I put kale in there as well? Mm, and blue cheese, perfection. I'm just gonna, to be honest, I might as well use all of this because I don't know what else I'm gonna use it for this week. The aim is to basically cover the veg in the stock. Okay, that's covered and I've got this much left. Sometimes I pour some of this, I heat it up and I pour it on the dog's dinner if they're not eating all their dinner because sausage dogs are fussy. So I'm gonna put this on a slow um, turn, put the blades on reverse so they're not chopping just yet. Actually, I guess they could do. No, I'll do it just so that it's spinning, not chopping. Bring it up to around 70 degrees for around 20 minutes. Then we'll blend and then we'll just keep doing some taste tests and figure out what it needs. Normally it might need more um, pepper or more salt. If it needs a little bit more creaminess, you could add in actual cream, you could add in milk, you could add in coconut milk, coconut cream, but we'll only know that later on. I could have followed a recipe, but soup, you just can't really go wrong.